So Jeff, do you want to do a little introduction? Tell us about you and uh, your your research projects on the C3 expedition. And then we'll take some questions from our donors. Sure, so my name is Dr. Jeff Sorella. I'm a research scientist at the Canadian Museum of Nature in Ottawa, and I'm also the director of the museum's Center for Arctic Knowledge and Exploration. So the museum has a long-standing history of conducting research and exploring the Canadian Arctic and learning about it. So uh, what I'm doing on the Canada C3 expedition, which is a 150-day journey that started in Toronto on June 21st and is going to end in Victoria at the end of October, I've just joined leg 10 of that expedition. And we left, I joined the party in Community of Cambridge Bay in Western Nunavut. And uh, we're now, we just we just traveled through the strait south of Victoria Island and north of the mainland here in the Arctic. And we, we arrived early this morning at uh, Bay Kimo, which is the beautiful head of Bathurst Inlet here in, uh, in, in Nunavut. Take you out and show you where we are. Sorry, Jeff. Um, we're having trouble hearing all of the sentence. Because I think okay. we cut out a little bit. So I think we have to slow down a little bit because we didn't hear where you guys were from exactly. Okay, so uh, if you can't hear, give me a hand signal or something and I'll, or I'll try to slow down. So uh, I joined leg, leg 10 of the expedition at Cambridge Bay. In Western Nunavut, Cambridge Bay is on southeastern Victoria Island, one of the largest islands and the biggest one in the Western Canadian Arctic. And we left the community of Cambridge Bay at about 2 p.m. yesterday on this ship, the Polar Prince, which is an icebreaker. And we traveled about 16 hours and we woke up this morning beautiful harbor at the mouth of Bathurst Inlet. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have to remind ourselves. Can you understand? Okay. So it's a little bit tough because I know that. Yes, we understand. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so can, can I just take you out outside and show you uh, where we are? Yes, please do. Okay, and I, let's keep the connection. So. Okay. Right now, I'm in the uh, I'm in the Bowhead Lab here at the front end of our ship, and this is an old workshop. This used to be a workshop when this ship was a, a working icebreaker, and uh, we turned it into a, a research laboratory. The 150 day journey of this ship, and it's it's an incredible space. This is the area where we've been doing our plant research, and I'll I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Okay, but let me just take you. Let's say this is Felicity, who is coordinating the media. One of the times with the notion, we're live to the world. <laughs> okay, so. Now, just say something. I'm going to try and not drop the laptop into the ocean. Yeah, good idea. Can you see the, uh, the land? Oh, can you see anything? It's beautiful. It's clear. It's very clear. It's beautiful. So, so this is Bay Chimo, and what this is a, a, commu a, a community that people no longer live in year-round, but they, they come here often in the summer, sometimes in the fall. And uh, you can't really see a lot of the houses, but they're just around this corner. It's absolutely beautiful, so I'm going to try and just turn the camera a bit and show you the, the topography. you got these large mountains all around us. Is it coming through? Yes. It's looking great. And it's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful day. The forecast here, it's supposed to be 14 degrees. The sun is shining. It's blue. There's no mosquitoes. It's incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Wish we were there. Yes, we are. Although it's nice and all the Yeah. <laughs> It was snowing in Cambridge Bay briefly a day or so ago. So a, there's a big change in climate in the northern part of mainland, none of it where we are, and, and Cambridge Bay, which is on the other side, with on the southern Arctic islands. So those those cold Arctic waters really influence the climate. 
Sure. So at the museum in Ottawa, part of my research program is aimed at studying and documenting and understanding the biodiversity of Arctic plants. So there's about 800 or so species of vascular plants, plants that have water conducting in, in the whole Canadian Arctic. And the goal of this research program is to document where the species occur and what they are. So this is really, really basic research, but these are are, are simple questions, but simple questions that we don't have comprehensive answers for. So we are trying to gather this baseline information to get a good understanding, not only of the natural history of Canada, which is part of the museum's mission, but this information can contribute, hopefully will contribute to our understanding of how the uh, vegetation might change the climate warms, which it is that which is happening. Perfect. Have you seen any changes? Because you've been in the Arctic a couple of, a couple of times in the last uh, couple of years, right? Yeah, I've been, I've been on, on a number of expeditions to the Arctic, but since the goal of, of my work is to document species where, where they occur, we never go back to the same place twice. So I don't have a personal point of reference to really tell you with any confidence that I can tell you without question that there is substantial data exists that, yes, vegetation is changing in the Arctic in a major way. So shrubs uh, like willows and birches are getting bigger. They're getting denser. Okay? And this is documented clearly. Uh, by satellite information. Um, the Arctic overall is getting greener. Again, this has been documented by satellites that pass over the Arctic every year and take spectral photographs and then researchers can analyze those those images and you can see how how greenness changes through time. So yes, there have been major changes. Excellent. Thank you. Would you like us to turn it on to our, uh, to our visitors and see if there's any questions? Yeah, maybe I'll tell you just what, what we were doing this morning. Can I do that? Yes, please do. Okay, so so this morning, like I said, we just pulled in here. We had breakfast on the ship. The uh, the, the food is fantastic. The crew is great. This is a really comfortable place to be. About about nine o'clock, we all the team here we we popped in zodiacs and we were taken to shore. And we a lot of people spent some time uh, berry picking, crowberries and. Uh, Mountain cranberries, and I think we're going to maybe get a nice dessert with those tonight. Other people spend a bit of time in some kayaks and some uh, stand-up boards. I forget what they're called. Stand-up paddle boards. Other people spend a few hours hiking around. Uh, me and my colleague, Liana, here, we spent the three hours madly trying to make as many plant collections as we possibly could to, to document this little area uh, as much as possible. It's very rich here. It's very diverse. It's late in the growing season because uh, it's the end of August and, and, and the growing season in the Arctic is very short. So a lot of the plants were, were you know, not looking so, so green anymore, it's brown, but still collectible. So we made a ton of collections and that's why I maybe hold up for the bags that, that, that are full of our plants. This is like, I don't know, one fifth of them maybe. And there's like several different species in each of these bags hours of sorting and processing to do here in the lab at some point. We're going back out this afternoon. So I'll take the time to maximize the opportunity to get into these places that I, I certainly will never return to. Let me show you one thing that was kind of interesting and that's going to be the most exciting collection for me this morning. So uh, let's see if anybody can tell me. Anybody know what this is? Can you, can you see it? Common species in the south in, in more southern areas. Oh, it's fireweed. It's fireweed, yeah, absolutely. So, so fireweed is one of those things that that likes disturbance, likes to grow. Well, it's called fireweed because after a fire in the boreal forest, this is one of the first things that come back. It's an early successional species, likes open spaces, likes lots of sunlight. Well, this species, it 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 it's, it grows in the Arctic as well. It becomes less common, but, but it, it's recorded in this part of the Arctic all the way to the northern coast, where we are right now. So uh, right here is at its northern limit. This species is not known from Victoria Island, immediately across the strait that we're, we just, we just uh, came through. And that strait is, I don't know, 
10, 15 kilometers wide. So there's a real barrier to dispersal. And this is one of many species of plants that at its current northern known range limit is the northern coast uh, of the continent. So this is something that may migrate northwards as we move north. And I know it's not known from Victoria Island because we studied that southern part of Victoria Island a number of years ago. I mean, it's possible it's there and nobody's found it, but in the places that botanists have been, it's not there. And another thing that's interesting is, even though it's late in the season, this plant, there was huge stands of it, it was very big, and it's still still flowering. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So, um, there's not a lot of colorful things left in flower, but this was one of the few. Uh, get a ton of it. I'm gonna put them into uh, in my plant press, and, and this is a the this is a plant press that, that includes collections I made around Cambridge Bay a couple of days ago, and they've been drying here. We have a nice heater, so things dry quickly. But but uh, specimens are all going to be put in newsprint, flattened like a sandwich into this plant press, dried, and once they're dry, we'll bring them back to the museum. We'll organize them. We'll sort them. We'll print out labels that say where we collected them, the date, the location, the habitat. Eventually, they'll get stuck onto acid-free paper. And they'll be accessioned into the National Herbarium of Canada. They'll become part of the permanent record uh, documenting biodiversity in time and space. And we'll also share duplicate or replicate specimens with other herbaria in Canada, but also internationally. So the plants that we collected this morning eventually will make their way all around the world, and they'll contribute to, uh, to research um, for many years to come. So this is how uh, knowledge about plant diversity grows. Pardon the pun. Amazing. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. And you've got all the equipment and all the tools that you need. That's fantastic. Oh, Jack, we have a question from our audience about the rarest, the rarest plant you have ever found. Where? You've ever found. Oh, the rarest plant I've ever found. Well, let's see. In the in the Arctic, I guess is that the question? I'm thinking. Yes, in the Arctic. In the Arctic. Uh, so so yeah, we, we often find species that uh, that that are not very common and they're not known. Uh, from the area before, so why don't I? I found something very rare in Cambridge Bay, and I'm pretty sure it's the first record for that island. And I think it's it's a boreal species, a, a kind of uh, name is escaping me. It'll come back to me. So I found something in Cambridge Bay, just a tiny plant. There was only one of them. Something that that I knew uh, was not known from there. It's, something just happened in the ship here, so it's gotten a bit loud. Don't worry. You can still do your plant. Okay, I'll try and talk loud. Um, other rare plants. So on the on the Arctic islands, on Victoria Island, a couple of years ago, we found a species of orchid. We only found it in one spot. That was the first record of that orchid for that island. And it's mu it's very common on this side on the mainland, but but across the strait, only in, in one spot. That's one example. Wow. Right. We're just going to move out, out onto the, the deck here. I, you know, what, what, what that is, is uh, that's the anchor. The, the ship, the captain of the ship is lifting the anchor, and we're, we're moving to another spot. So that sound is the anchor coming up. Do we have another question for audience? <laughs> We have a technical question here. What kind of anchor does the ship have? What kind of anchor does the ship have? Does, does anybody here know what kind of anchor? <laughs> we got it. We got somebody who knows. Well, come on the screen. So, Mark Graham here is the chief scientist. He's also from the Museum of Nature on the expedition. He's been on the ship for about six weeks. You know the answer. Hi, Mark. I don't know. I don't know how the anchor is, but it's it's coming up to fall down, uh, hold in place on a ship that's sort of 
Everybody, the anchor, the anchor, the anchor holds down this 250-foot-long uh, ship. Gigantic uh, metal anchor. Uh, it must weigh at least a ton. And so they have they have uh, three of them: two on the front and one on the stern. Thank you, sir. Yes. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I have a question. What um, what's the uh, Arctic superfood? Like, if you were uh, origin, what's the plant that you would get the most uh, nutrition from? Yeah. Uh, can you repeat that? I, I couldn't quite catch it all. Natalie, can you repeat that? Yes, sure. The question is, in the Arctic, what would be the superfood, you know, if you're on survival mode and you really need to get the most nutrition out of a plant, which one would it be? Oh, well, first thing is if you need to survive, you don't eat plants. You eat seals or fish or Arctic char or uh, beluga. But if, if you have to survive on plants, you, you could right now because there's lots of berries. There's there's crowberries, I think I mentioned. It's late, it's fall here, so they're ripe. There's blueberries. There's mountain cranberries. There's cloudberries, which is a thing related to the, to a raspberry. And uh, th those are the main main berry crops that, that, that people up here eat in a big way and berry season berry picking is a big important part of the culture in the north so yeah i mean other times of the year there is something you can eat called sorrel sorrel mountain sorrel it's uh it's very leafy it's kind of reddish green it's very bitter but but people eat that um but but there are fewer plants you can eat in the arctic compared to say the boreal forest sure Excellent. thank you any other questions What is your favorite thing about the ship? What is your favorite thing about the ship? Or favorite food or favorite activity or anything? Your favorite thing about the Favorite food? Favorite food or favorite activity? Favorite thing about being on the C3 ship? Oh, favorite thing about being on the C3 ship. Boy, that's tough. Uh, well, I think it's the people that that I've got to meet so far. So the, there's a real diversity of people. There's a former gold medal Olympic swimmer on board, Mark Tewksbury, I believe is his name. There's a famous Canadian singer-songwriter named Joe Barber, who I've got to interact with and, and spend time with and meet. There's uh, people from across the north. There's people from... Uh, from the south, there's other scientists on board, there's artists on board, there's a real mix of cross walk of Canadian society. So, fantastic for us all to be participating in this journey together. And science is just one component about uh, of the mission of C3, and of course, it's a component that, I, that I've been involved in. But but another component of this this uh, expedition is reconciliation, and we've been having discussions and. Uh, talking about, about that issue in a major way, in a deep way, and having those discussions that, that need to happen in this country. So I've been enjoying that too. We're also very fortunate to, to have two federal cabinet ministers on the ship a few days ago. Federal Minister of Transportation, Mark Garneau, joined us on board uh, a couple of days ago, and then he left, and then he came back because his uh, airplane couldn't make it out of town due to weather. And uh, Minister of Indigenous Affairs, Carolyn Bennett, was also in Cambridge Bay a couple of days ago, and she joined us for some discussion on the ship. So that, that was a real privilege to get to interact with, with those ministers. For sure. That's a long answer. No, that's great. <laughs> many, things, many things are fantastic about the ship. Any other questions? Anything you want to find out? Okay, we would like to know, perfect, we would like to know how many people are on the ship currently, like, 
captain, the crew, the scientists, how many people are on this? Yeah, uh, the, the ship's capacity is 60, and I know when we left Cambridge Bay, we were at capacity, and I believe there's there's still 58 to 60 people on board. So the, I think the crew is like 12 or 13 people, the, the ship crew, and then there's a number of Canada C3 staff members, people that are you know driving Zodiacs, monitoring for bears, we have a physician on board, those people that, uh, that you know, taking care of programming, just coordinating all the participants, and then there's there must be 20 or so participants, including myself, other members of the science team, maybe 25. So a total of 60 people. It's not a huge ship. First ship I've ever lived on. I think it's great. Okay, thank you. That's great. Any other questions? Yes, we're talking west. Yeah, and then they will like to go yeah. All right. No, we have any more questions. No, well, we do have another question. Right? That will be our last question. What is your favorite part about your job? Jeff? Did we lose Jeff? Maybe on your end oh no no that's no. a 301 no that's a 301 yeah maybe we can just you know, there and take that in uh, we, we lost it we lost the video feed yeah okay so you can thank them at all Consider, yeah. So, were you doing this from your own Google account? Yes. Oh, that was the only way. Okay. So, it recognized your Google account? Yeah, it did. It recognized my Google account. And so, I was able to. So, you were able to get my phone? Yeah. It did say, I went, so I closed that page, I reopened another one, and it says, Did you know you can download the phone without admin? I'm like, Well, why, why do I have that? You know, that window popped up. So, I clicked. Did I click cancel or something like that? And then and then it said installing Chrome. And I'm like, no oh, way. I'm a total. Oh, I'm like, oh, funny that. And the dress was supposed to have one of those lunch Yes. People said, oh, no, she won't be here. <gasps> but, but Russ, I think that you'd be able to get on with uh, without Chrome. I know, that's what he was telling you. you. Thank you. Have a great summer. Hope you get back on the ship. <laughs> Yeah, she works programming with the chemistry. Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess so, yeah. And they didn't reply back, which is kind of funny because 
C3 had already. Anyhow. Okay, so I guess we'll close it down. Bon, bon, bon. Now, in terms of. Um, so your box would have always popped up with your own profile. At least it's uh, I mean, at least, you know, it's, I'll it's send cute, you, but it's, it's I'll like. Send you should have a museum. Okay. So Pam did it. I don't know the username is. I don't know the picture will be in the notes. Hmm? I know. It's really dope. Oh, oh, they left the group chat. Why is this? Surprised they didn't reply back, though. I know. Felicity Freeman. Now she was Felicity was with C three back on the ship. We. Oui. She's on the ship. She okay. was the girl with the the hat. This is it's the red one here, right? That is the volume. You can leave it like that. And Miss Wesson. That's the one. That was the one magical button. That's what I said. That's okay. Thank you so much. Not a problem. It always works better. Yeah, that's it. And did you need to change any of these settings? No. It popped. That was. It says no mic, no video. Maybe it's because nothing's happening. They says so, but the video was on. Wait, wait, wait. So okay. The video was on. Oh, turn camera off. And now it's off. Okay, so the video was on. Okay, turn camera. Off. Huh. All right. Alors, je ferme.